Hey guys, today we're going to be finishing up the uh, 179cc LCT Killer Tiller engine. <laughs> and I'm going to try to put these 1.3 to 1 ratio rockers on there if we can. And we're going to be changing the carburetor. Now, this is the carburetor off of the 224 Predator build we did. We replaced this with a Makuni clone. It's a little bit larger carburetor than what's on it, so on this one, so why not? And I'll be adding this throttle assembly because the LCT doesn't come with one. It's just got this spring bracket, holds it at uh, max RPM so you start it up. We don't really need all that. So we're going to throttle control it a little bit. And here's another piece we saved from the Predator engine build. This uh, Ducar air cleaner, very nice. Where this one had none, so. And another thing I'm going to change out too. This this is a muffler that came on the LCT, and the way that mounts that exhaust would be blowing straight back on me. So, yeah, I don't really want that while I'm tilling. So, I'm going to use this. Uh, two, I think it was a 224 uh, Predator muffler. All new parts, and this is why you don't throw anything away because you know, hey guys, we got. We got use for these parts. But first thing I want to do today is I want to get this head off here. And so we'll start get this valve cover off. I want to get this head off and take a look at this piston. Now, it's kind of interesting. These 179 cc engines have a 65 millimeter bore. And normally on the clones, uh, the 196 cc engines, They've got a 68 millimeter bore. Now that's that's another one of the oddball things uh, about this LCT, on you know, the different size, smaller bore. But the funny thing is, uh, it comes in at uh, the bore size is two inches, 560. No, excuse me, 559 thousandths. Two inches, 559 thousandths. Well, the stock bore five horsepower Briggs is two inches, 561 thousandths. So it's right at the same, same size as the five horse Briggs engines. And that's interesting. Uh, if you're thinking about doing a long rod engine that requires a uh, the, the old flathead Briggs piston, that would work. Uh, okay, well, we'll just ignore that fell in the floor there. Slide this thing back and get this thing out of here. And this carburetor, it, it didn't run too good. It was kind of rich and there's really no adjustments on this one. I'd have to jet it. So, uh, Plus it's smaller. So I, I think it'd be a good idea to replace it. Have a little more power with that other carb. But, you know, I... So far, I have been really pleased with about everything on this L. Golly. Uh, on this LCT engine, I've been really pleased with the internals so far, and uh, so I, you know, kind of anxious to look inside this head and see what's going on. And I want to get a look at these valves too because I'm pretty sure it's going to have, uh, you know, my money. It'll have a 25 millimeter intake and probably you know 24 millimeter exhaust is what I'm counting on here, but we'll see. Yeah, those bolts were really tight and they wouldn't break loose with my little impact. Of course, you know that little impact. It's not. It's a quarter inch. It's not very powerful. And let's see. Yep, let's get that shield out of the way here before we pull that head off. Okay. 
And you guys remember, there's only three bolts holding this thing on. Now this one, they seem to be all 10 millimeter. Uh, a lot of the other Predators had an 8 millimeter head. This has a 10 millimeter head on it. It's kind of handy. Don't have to switch the sockets out as much. Sitting on something. I'm sitting on my connector, my switch or something. Let me get that under there. Now yeah, we can get this head off. Ah, corrosion. What is this white corrosion stuff on here? Huh. Well, that's odd. It's a brand new engine. <laughs> well, I might have to clean those up. And... Use them on something else. I'm probably not going to put those back yet. I think I'll clean those up maybe and use, save them for something else. I've got some new ones laying around. Wow. 27 millimeter intake, 25 millimeter exhaust. Well, I'm shocked. That's a pretty good size set of valves there. Wow. Now let's see what kind of, uh, we've got a nice looking flat top. Let's see what kind of uh, distance we got here. It's down in the hole. Yeah, it's, it's the piston top is below deck at top dead center. It's below deck. Let's see how much we got. Uh, I should have used this uh, breaker bar to break those head bolts loose for everybody that wants me to be perfect. But, you know, <laughs> I, t I don't use a breaker bar on something that small. I'll just use my ratchet and. If it breaks, they'll, they'll give me a new one. Well, let me check and see how far below deck this piston is. Coming up to right at 34,000. So I'll check it in a few more places. That's the nice thing about this little eye gauging thing, too. Yeah. Right at 34. The little eye gauging thing, you can set it right down on top of the block. And this one, it covers the bore because it's a smaller bore. Yeah, I got a little, about 33 on that one, but that's okay. The piston probably rocked a little bit. And we're showing 34 on this one. So yeah, around 33, 34 thousandths down the hole, below deck. And this is a really thin metal head gasket. Let's see, let me put the old uh, dial caliper on here. See what we come up with. That's about a 12 thousandths thick head gasket. Look good. <laughs> yeah, 12. I'll put that back on. But let me look. Okay, PW210. Oh, I see. This is off their 210cc engine or 208cc engine. They just put the head, same head on the 179. Now, this is off the 224 Predator. This has come from the Hemi build we did, the Hemi head swap. And it looks like the combustion chambers are about the same size. I don't know, maybe 18, 20, somewhere around in there, to maybe 22. But uh, the valve sizes are the same, and nah, I'm really thrilled about that. Well, there's a big difference here, and I'm sorry, guys, you can't see it there, but the intake port on the 224 Predator is much better, as was the exhaust. So I think what I'm going to do uh, to help uh, promote a little flow, I'm going to go ahead and put that uh, 224 Predator head on here with this uh, 12 thousandths thick shim head gasket. 224, yeah. Much better flowing head than what was on there, even though the valve sizes are the same, but uh, this has got a lot better, lot better work on the ports. 
and I've not ported these heads, and I'm you know I'm not gonna do anything to this one. Uh, it's just a stock Predator 224 head, and I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put a, the torque wrench on this, and th let's go to uh, 17 foot pounds, which is about 203 or 204 inch pounds, and uh, that's why I'm using the little uh, quarter inch uh, inch pound wrench here. It, these things are handy. They'll do your head bolts, side cover bolts, and uh, you can also do your, you know, connecting rod bolts with them. But uh, for this torque spec, it's it's 203, 204 inch pounds or 17 foot pounds. And probably a little more important, you torque them if you use the uh, steel shim head gaskets. They're not as forgiving. <laughs> and I went ahead and put the uh, new head bolts in there too. I'll clean those others up and use them on something else. But now, yeah, this is the one off the 224. It says Ducar, but I really still don't know who makes this. It's just a Chinese clone carb. But uh, what I was mainly concerned with, the bore was bigger, and that original spacer plate that came on that 179cc had a small hole. This is the one off the Predator, yeah, 224. This has got a much, much bigger spa uh, hole on that spacer. And uh, it's kind of port match too, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that with the Predator carburetor. Much better, much better. And you know, I'm not going to take this engine up uh, high RPM, but it'll have more airflow, uh, you know, at the stock range around 3,600 3, to 4,000. It's probably all I'll ever turn this up. But uh, it's got enough uh, difference there on the airflow, it should make a better running engine. Linkage fits perfect. Now, if I can get that spring in there with my big fingers, uh, sorry, my hand's in the way, guys, but you know that spring goes in that hole on the carb linkage. And this is where the people with small, small hands and small fingers excel on putting small stuff together like that. It's like it's going to work okay. That linkage is fine. Now, I'm going to pull these stock rockers off here and compare it with the 1.3 to 1 ratio rockers and raise it up. There we go. Oh, yeah, big difference. <laughs> big difference. Uh, that that 1.3 to 1 ratio. Uh-oh, uh wait a minute. That's tight, and that is not fitting down into the slot at all. That push rod is much bigger than a stock push rod. Well, let's see. Will it fit up there at the top of the slot, fit into it? And no, it will not. That's not gonna, that's not even close. Ah, look at the, the LCT push rod, the black one on the left, much thicker diameter than the uh, Predator push rods. And that means I'm not going to be able to use this uh, guide plate. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. I do have a aftermarket guide plate I bought that's for the larger diameter push rods. Uh-oh. Now I see a problem. Yep. This is not going to be close enough to the stud for me to run. Nope. I'm not going to be able to put the 1.3 to 1 ratio rockers on there today. That's okay. I'll just uh, order me a... Uh, you can get those little billet guide plates for like, you know, 8 or $10. And they're slotted rather than having the little nylon holes. 
So, yeah, I'll just get one of those on order. I'm going to go ahead and finish this up for today, but, man, I'm going to get those rockers on there. I'm not going to be able to do it today, but that's okay. I'll just order one of those little guide plates, and the next time I order something, uh, get it shipped along with the other parts. Uh, you know, I don't mind paying 8 or $10 for a part that I need, but, you know, you really don't want to pay 8 or $10 for your part and then pay $12 to get it shipped to you. You know, that's uh, that's kind of counterproductive. And maybe I'm just a little bit frugal, but uh, I like to try to combine shipping and save on that if possible. Yeah. Yeah, this one fits... Uh, Push rods fit through there nicely on this one. Now I'll just, I'll, I'll just go ahead and put the uh, 224 rockers back on, and they're just stock ratio, but they are rounded tips, you know, rather than the squared tip. So yeah, let me put a little more lift in there than the uh, other type stock rockers. And you guys know this deal. You just uh, run these nuts out there. That's, then I put the retaining lock nuts on top. I'm going to turn this over. Now this one, I, what I want to look for, check my, as soon as that the compression valve bumps, I'm just pass that bump there, then stop. And that should be right at the top dead center where I can go ahead and, uh, adjust my valves a little bit and normally you know if, if you don't have the uh, piston up to top dead center uh, you could still adjust it you uh, another way that I normally use anyway when I'm in a hurry I'll just I'm not in a hurry today just open one valve up where it's open all the way and then you adjust the one that's closed and you do the same thing just repeat the process open the next one up and then uh, adjust the closed valve. Now the way I'm doing these things here is, you know, I'll start out a little loose and then tighten it down and see what I can get for my first, but it seems like it always gets too tight on me. So I end up just having the vash, the, excuse me, the lash a little tight and then I'll loosen it up and start loosening it up, turn it just a little bit. And these uh, non-hemi type engines are a little bit more challenging, but you'll get it. You know, just loosen it up. Ah, I already got that one. Loosen them up and uh, open it up just a little bit at a time until you get your lash. Uh, this one worked out pretty good. Whoa. Boy. That was way loose on my uh, lock nut there. Alrighty. Lock him down. What did we do? No, we tightened it down too much. Okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead and break this lock nut loose. Back up just a hair. Check him again. And I know sometimes this can be frustrating, guys. Just, you know, just repeat the process. If you get a little tight, back him up, recheck. You can wiggle your rocker, make sure it sits straight. There you go. Let's see. Yep. Now, after you get them adjusted, just spin her around a little bit. Make sure everything's seated and sitting where it's supposed to be. Check your lash again. You still feel a little drag? I'm setting these at three. If you still feel a little drag after you rotated, hey, you did good. It's done. I'm just going to smear a little oil on that gasket, the valve cover gasket. It didn't tear, so I'm going to put it right back on there. And as soon as my billet uh, push rod uh, guide plate comes in, I'll uh, 
get those one to three, one point three to one ratio rockers and stick back on there because I want to try a little bit more lift with this engine. And I'm gonna leave, you know, the stock springs on there because you know, 11, 12 pounds, that's that's all I need. Gonna be turning right at the factory set, governored RPM. So no need for really heavy duty springs. And yep, I'm not supposed to hit that spark plug with that uh, ratchet there, but that's what I did. <laughs> uh, I got my plugs at 35, and this is that old cheap torch plug. But hey, you know, it's new, so we're going to use it until it quits working. And then we'll put an NGK or something better in there. Auto light, I don't know. Right. Plug in, plug wire on. Now I have to put this throttle bracket in here. It'll fit, and yeah, it has all the holes to mount this throttle bracket off of that 224 Predator on this dude. This is great. You know, a lot of the features on this thing has been clone. All the holes in the block. Everything seems to line up fine. And I didn't show you guys. The, there's one uh, hole on the bottom to where you hook the throttle spring up to that lever. There's only one hole, so you can't get it wrong. Only one spot to hook your spring. And then uh, the spray, of course, the other end goes on the governor arm back there. And I just put mine on the middle hole back there. You know, leave me some room for adjustment. I can go one way or another if I need to. But, yeah. The bracket lined up with the block and the head. Uh, got my little 10 millimeter head bolts there. Perfect. Does it work? Yeah. That's it. Great. I got a working throttle. That uh, pull start handle, I'm going to re probably rotate that later on. <laughs> that's that's kind of in the way. And that's that big handle, too. I need to put that one on that uh, high compression build we got. And, very important, this is the uh, Dakar air cleaner off of that uh, 224 Predator. that rascal on there along with my cool little acorn nuts retaining nuts and the killer tiller is gonna be cool <laughs> let's see yep let's put this thing back on there you guys don't know how to do that And here's the muffler. It's got some gasket scrapings left on there, so I'm just going to go ahead and put that on there real quick. That will probably get us for today. And I'm not going to start this thing up today, guys, because I don't have a gas tank on there. I'm going to have to mount an external gas tank on the killer tiller. As soon as I get the engine off the killer tiller, and we'll put this one, i got to get some stuff unfrozen on that killer tiller. I'll, I'll show you a little quickie right here of the killer tiller. We'll see what, what that looks like. And this is the killer tiller. This is an old, gosh... TSC brand, Husky brand, came from the TSC stores. Very cool old tillers. They were tough. And this one came with the five horsepower Briggs and Stratton, but yeah, all this stuff is frozen up. This thing's been sitting since probably 2004. <laughs> and this old Briggs is really bad. Oh, check out this tank. You ever seen one rusted that bad? 
<laughs> That's pretty tough. Uh, but we've got to free up a bunch of stuff on here and get him cleaned up so we can uh, get that uh, new engine on there and give him some new life. And yeah, don't call that number, guys. I don't have that phone anymore. But that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. We'll see you next time.